Thank you. Very much for having me here today, Pierre. And inviting me as well. Mr. Shima, I'm looking forward to the next generation television development project we just signed a contract on seeing great success. Yes. I know this will be a great opportunity for both our companies. By the way, do you like the wine, Kumiko? Mm, yes, it is very good. Don't you think so, dear? Mmm, it is good. Is this a Bordeaux? No. Please look at the label. What? China? That's right. It was introduced by one of the five Bessomeliers in Paris. A wine this good made in China. In fact, Mr. Shima, the person running the winery is a young woman. She has figured out the art of getting to the bottom of things. Wow, a young female entrepreneur. Manga business hero Shima Kosaku has successfully navigated the rise and fall of Japan. New Asian entrepreneurs are cutting a place for themselves in the global economy. In this series, Shima learns their secrets to success. Great Britain, a nation that values authority and tradition. In 2011, a Chinese wine won a silver medal in one of the largest wine contests in the world, hosted by a wine magazine. A 2008 vintage wine. It won over some of the most prestigious wine producers in the world. The silver medal winner was a small winery located in Shanxi province, China. In only 10 years, it has been able to produce wine that is praised around the world. The winery is managed by Judy Chan, age 37. She has a knack for the real thing and allows no compromise. Her path was a fight against old stereotypes that the world had concerning Chinese wine. And then they were asking me, how come it's not sweet? They, their, their impression of wine was supposed to be sweet. Chinese wine is sweet. In order to overturn that image, Chan became selective in her production. She brought in grapevines as well as a brewer from France, a traditional home of fine wines. She also developed her own marketing method. In order to show people abroad that her wine was not typical sweet Chinese wine, she partnered with a famous winemaker in Europe and worked hard to spread the word. Sommeliers, I remember in Grand Hyatt, tasting the wine and say, maybe it's Italian wine, how much you would pay? Mmm, it's incredibly fruity and very polished. I also think this is the best. Actually, this wine was made at this young lady's winery. What? Really? In China? China, 50 RMB. They were like, wow, cannot be possible. Yes. Chen keeps astonishing wine connoisseurs around the world. What drives her is the strong will to deliver true wine to the world. For Grace Vineyard, our, um, our mission statement is inspire people to better their life. But when, when I said better their life, doesn't mean that you need to go luxurious. But it just makes your life more colorful. Chen is creating a new model within the Chinese world of business. Today, a close look at the challenge facing a young Chinese female entrepreneur.
Hong Kong is an international city of commerce where the best of the best from around the world can easily be found. Here on one of the city's busy streets is a shop that deals in only the world's best wines. Wines from famous wine producing countries of the world such as France, Italy and Spain line the shelves. Among them is Chan's wine. It is the only Chinese wine sold at this shop. Get this one right here. Customers value it highly, saying that it is on par with the okay. best wines of Europe. Else, maybe something more expensive, like the chair. Taste of Grace Vineyard is very fruity and very balanced. Grace is very, um, they focus on the quality. So this is what I like about wine from Grace. We, I'm Chinese, and I don't know much that even China has, uh, has wine producing. And then uh, the quality is quite good compared to some other wines I have been trying. Chan's company is located in the business district of Hong Kong. At 9 a.m., Chan comes to work. Chan's company is a new winemaker, established only 18 years ago. Thirty-seven-year-old Chan has two children. She juggles the two jobs of being a mother and a company director. Three years ago, in the Asian edition of the U.S. magazine Fortune, she was chosen as one of the 25 most influential women in business. This company holds less than a 1% share of the wine business in China. However, her wine has an established reputation and is served not only in China, but also at high-class hotels in Europe and the US. I think you should always make a wine that you like. That's at least my principle. Taigu, Shanxi province, is a one-hour flight from Beijing. Chan's winery is located here. The wine factory is fitted with the newest equipment. The squeezing of the grapes, the brewing, and the bottling are done in one continuous operation. 1.5 million bottles of red and white wine combined are produced yearly. The grapes are grown in fields located around the factory. They cover an area of about 200 hectares. They are growing 15 different types of grapes here. A characteristic of this area is that the soil is coarse and thus has good water drainage. The average temperature is a low 10 degrees Celsius. Precipitation is also low throughout the year. Climatic conditions are similar to those of famous grape-producing regions of the world. Chan frequently moves back and forth between her headquarters in Hong Kong and the winery. Today, Chan has come to check on the wine from the previous year. <laughs> Chan is serious about true winemaking. The wine is aged in a semi-basement storage area with a strictly maintained temperature. What is being prepared is a vintage wine. This is wine made from grapes of the same year that were harvested from particular fields. A winery's true color is most faithfully represented by its vintage wine. Uh,
Chan's preference for vintage wine is especially strong. I definitely think that our wine is competitive in a worldwide um, or international market. Um, for us, we wanted to do vintage wine. The reason is because uh, I like, uh, one of the reasons I like wine is because you can always taste where is it from and that uh, weather of that year. So I think doing vintage wine is what we want to do. Chan was born in Hong Kong in 1977. Hong Kong was then still under British control. Her father was an entrepreneur who owned various businesses throughout China. After she graduated from a U.S. university, Chan began working at a foreign investment company. From there, it was her father who pulled her into the world of wine. I had just turned 24. My father suddenly asked me to help out at a winery. Since my work was just getting interesting, I really hesitated. My father had just bought a vast estate in Shanxi province and built a winery. He cultivated the land and planted grapes that were imported from France, the home of fine wines. A veteran brewer was called in as well. Also, taking sanitation into account, my father was determined to make real wine that could compete on the international market. However, at that time, wine in China generally meant a sweet beverage that consisted of mixing a small amount of real wine with large amounts of sugar and food coloring. I had a lot of doubts about whether the people of China would accept the wine that my father was trying to make. Judy, this wine I made, what do you think? Well, the flavor is perfect. Right? It could compete with European wines. But... Do you think people in China will buy wine that is not sweet? Well, I think it will still take some time in China. However, I think the people of the world will understand. What do you say? Would you like to try this? Delivering real wine from China to the world. I decided to take a chance on my father's dream. 我女儿香港出生美国受教育对这方面呢他来主来主持这个工作他能够把这这葡萄酒是西方文化饮食文化起一个很主要了他来推广好过我来推广我当时我认为可能我们这个 Chan studied winemaking from scratch. She learned about raising the vines in the fields and learned about fermenting the grapes from professionals at a winery. She finally got the business running and put one million bottles on the market. However, only 20,000 were sold. For the Chinese, wine was meant to be a sweet beverage. The stereotype could not be broken. I mean, I, I think we were very desperate in terms of how to sell, but the problem with wine is that you can't stop productions. It's not like other industry, you can stop the production when you can't sell. We have to. The turning point came in 2002. The chance came with her encounter with a world-renowned winemaker. This winemaker was using Shanghai as its headquarters in China. 
the Spanish company Taurus was expanding its wine market in China. This is the managing partner, Alberto Fernandez. He discovered Chan's wine at a Beijing restaurant. That was in uh, around September 2002. The manager, a French gentleman, he introduced me the wine of Grace Vineyard, was just released to the market. Up until then, most of the wines made in China were very ordinary. And that was the first wine that was, let's call it, correct. Fernandez highly rated the flavor of our wine. He also told us the secret to breaking the stereotype that Chinese wine should be sweet. Mr. Fernandez, you have acknowledged our wine. However, it isn't selling well. There is a good way. Would you let me handle this? Ladies and gentlemen, today I have prepared wines from three different countries. Please pick the one that you find the best. I like this one. Is it made in Italy? It must be expensive. Mmm, it's incredibly fruity and very polished. I also think this is the best. Actually, this wine was made at this young lady's winery. Uh, what? Really? In, in, in China? China? So China also has genuine wine that is not sweet. After that, our wine's reputation rapidly spread through word of mouth. The meeting of these two also led to the creation of a new wine. This is a store directly managed by the tourist company located in Shanghai. This is a symphony series. This is the first project we made with uh, Grace Vineyard, uh, collaboration between two family-owned wineries. And it's a muscat, a dry wine. Many people were very impressed that Chinese white wine could be of this quality. The times were changing in China, and this also helped push Chen forward. During the 2000s, China underwent yearly economic growth of around 10%. The Chinese diet rapidly became westernized, starting mainly with the upper class. Foreign wines became popular, and China turned into one of the world's leading consumers of wine. Chan's wine, which only sold 20,000 at first, increased its sales year by year, from 100,000 to 300,000 to much more. So the fact that uh, Grace Vineyard is outstanding these days, it's, it's due to that they were the first ones to make the wine, as, as we call it, genuine wine. So Grace Vineyard, it, it became a, a new category within Chinese wine. So she created the category. Yes, I think sometimes there is destiny and faith, right? Um, we, by chance, get in touch and we work together ever since. I think I would say sometimes our relationship is a little bit like friends growing up together. In 2008, China hosted the Beijing Olympics and displayed its power to the world. That year, Chan's wine sold out so fast that production could barely keep up. However, Chan came across a serious snag. Imitations that used Chan's brand label on completely different wines began to surface in the market. Despite strict checks, 
the imitations kept popping up. Chan also became a target for such crimes. I, I agree. I think, you know, fake product is a serious uh, problem in China that hurt the consumer confidence. Um, because of that reason, I think that we need to treat this very seriously. How could they combat these fake products? What Chan came up with was limiting the stores that sold her wine. By creating a brand image that restricted Chan's wine to be sold only at special stores, she tried to gain consumers' confidence. Some channels, I know they can sell a lot, but I think they cannot guarantee it will have no fake product. I'd much rather give up than risking, which of course then slow, you, slow your growth, right? But I, I, I'd much rather be slow than sorry. After overcoming the imitation wine problem, Chan was given a new opportunity a global airline company that connects Hong Kong with 85 cities across the world. There was a chance that Chan's wine would be used in the airline company's first and business class wine list. If this went through, our wine might find its way to the entire world. My heart was beating fast. However, It was discovered that harmful chemicals were being mixed inside of powder milk. Feelings of distrust toward Chinese food products increased again. Hello? I'm from the airline company. Is this Miss Chen? Yes, this is Chan. What is it? Well, you should have heard about the powdered milk incident by now. This is difficult to tell you, but people within the company are increasingly worried about the safety of Chinese wine. That's outrageous! We are not a powder milk company. We make wine. Please, trust us. I understand, but please give us some time. Chen decided to prove the safety of her wine and explain it to the airline company. She ordered the laboratory inside of her winery to do a component analysis. The ingredients were meticulously examined and displayed in numbers to show there were no pesticide residues or harmful chemical substances mixed in the wine. And then... In 2009, Chan's wine was added to the airline company's wine list. And its reputation spread across the world almost instantly. Two years later, in 2011, Chan's wine received a silver medal in one of the largest wine contests in the world, hosted by a British wine magazine. It was a victory that won over many of the most famous wine-producing regions in the world, creating wine that can compete in the international market, her father's dream. Chan has achieved this dream by constantly staying true to the real thing. I think, I think from the beginning we wanted to build a brand and produce quality product, and that's more a directions um, rather than a policy. I think the concept of how we do it uh, evolved over time, but the directions has always been uh, producing quality product and with a high-end brand. Honey, I never thought I'd be drinking Chinese wine in France, did you? No. It is not only good, it also made me think. 
Hmm? Hello, this is Shima. This is Pierre. Sorry I was unable to see you off. I had a sudden meeting to attend. It's okay. Next time, please visit us in Japan. Yes, I will definitely go. Have a safe trip. All things considered, Pierre's story also made me think today. Yeah? How so? A young female entrepreneur in China? That is quite fascinating. I'm interested, too. That's true. A strong preference for the real thing is certainly the starting point of everything. Our company must also keep this in mind. Shall we get going? I need to buy some French wine to take home. What? French wine? A five-star hotel that stands in the middle of Hong Kong. Chan herself has come to sell a new wine. The sommelier, chef, and manager will be trying a 2012 vintage wine. This is much softer and rounder than the uh, Agliani yeah. we're trying in there. From exactly. The right yeah. here, right? so. Good wine, very good wine. Now we're there, we're running out the some aromatic yeah, yeah, yeah. and then for compare with the, I think the kitchen or the oil fire, oil the meat oil. Yes, yeah. Okay, thank you. Delivering true wine to the world, Chan's goal is to convey the climate and tradition of China to the world through wine. People who like wine, when they sit down and drink, they want to tell people what it is about, and why this wine is special. And then the story behind it make it more rich. For Grain Signard, our, uh, our mission statement is inspire people to better their life. But when, when I said better their life, doesn't mean that you need to go luxurious, but it just make your life more colorful. A female entrepreneur who carries the future of China, the second largest economic power in the world. Her challenge continues. <laughs>